Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back everyone. Let's get right into our topic for this video. As you people all know that we were refuting David Wood's fun Islamic fact. Well, why I'm going to Collins to refute him? Well, I'm not going to refute him completely in this video. I'm just picking up some points that I think should have been picked up in the fun Islamic facts by David Wood. Collins published a video saying Quran versus tradition trying to say that Prophet Muhammad, the tradition is going against the Quran. It literally talks about the miracles. So these allegations, we face it every day when we talk to some non-Muslims and we debate them. So we're going to refute that today. Let's start. But not only could he work miracles, his bodily fluids were also miraculous. Muhammad placed the child in his lap and commanded for the dates to be brought. He chewed them and then put the saliva in his mouth. The first thing which went into his stomach, that is of the boy, was the saliva of Allah's messenger. Now, how could this be called a miracle? Well, thirst never overcame me after sucking the Prophet's tongue. Therefore, it is, as an accepted hadith, a miracle of the Apostle of Allah. Bro, you're connecting to a hadith to another hadith without any reason. And you're connecting this hadith with a Shia source. As a Sunni Muslim, and you should have known this, man. Those books are not reliable. I'm just giving one reason. This narration says that uh, Hassan and Hussein always, always used to say it to the people that they didn't feel any thirst after sucking on Prophet Muhammad's tongue at that baby stage. Yeah. If they always used to say it, there are millions of narrators, not millions, a lot of narrators. We don't have that narration in our books. Why? Because it didn't happen. It's unreliable. Now, did Prophet Muhammad allow him to suck the tongue? The answer is yes. Only one circumstances. It happened, and you can find it in Al Qadi Ayyad. Al Qadi Ayyad uh, actually quoted a good hadith here. It's a sound hadith. It's not fully through a Sahih hadith, it's a Hassan hadith. It's considered to be a part of a good evidence. So the hadith goes like this Abu Huraira reported the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, heard Hussein and Hassan crying while they were with their mother in the desert. So he hurried to them and asked, What is the matter with my boys? The mother said, It is thirst. The Prophet went to the source of water, but at that time the water was scarce. The Prophet called out, does anyone have water? But no one had any water. So Prophet Muhammad said to the mother, bring one of them to me. Abu Raga said, Prophet Muhammad, actually this translation is faulty, it means sucked. Maybe they meant the same thing with it. But he sucked his tongue and moistured it until he came down because of thirst. It's created at Hassan. It was declared um, reliable by many scholars. al haytam and ash Shaukani is just to name a few. Yeah? This is the only time it happened. At the time, all those narrations have some kind of problems. We're going to talk about that in later videos. This happened only one time. Now, secondly, is the spit, the saliva of Prophet Muhammad miraculous? The answer is, oh hell yeah, because we have multiple, multiple reports, Sahih reports, talking about Prophet Muhammad's saliva can cure snake bite, poisoned wounds, and blindness. So it is proven that the saliva of Prophet Muhammad was miraculous. I'll link those in the description. Check it out. But of course, Muhammad had more than just miraculous spit. One of his companions drank his blood and licked it up. Another one drank his cupped blood. I have already refuted this topic. David Wood already picked it up. He started the same thing that you're doing. Well, actually, you're copying him. So he picked it up from the same source. He went to Islam Q&A. He hid. He literally hid the authenticity of these hadiths. I used the same article to debunk his claim. So the video will be linked in the description. It's a proof of David Wood's hypocrisy and deception. Do check it out. But I'm going to just say a few things on it. The hadith you're talking about is not authentic. The hadith about uh, Malik ibn Sinan licking Prophet Muhammad's wound and sucking the blood is mursal, i.e. disconnected, therefore a daif hadith. And the hadith regarding Abdullah ibn Zubair drinking the cupped blood is also daif because the narrator in the chain, one of them is majul. Majul means unknown. Therefore, it falls in the category of daif hadiths. All the other hadiths in this world regarding this topic is completely, completely daif. That means you cannot use any hadith at all to prove this point. Well, let's carry on now. Something similar is related about when a woman drank some of his urine. He told her, you will never complain of a stomachache. The hadith of the woman drinking the urine is sound. Uh, no. David Wood's Kaudi Ayad, I think he messed up at this point. The hadith regarding a woman drinking Prophet Muhammad's urine is also daif because of two reasons. One, in the chain of narrations, the discontinuity between Nabi al-Anzi and Umm Ayman. And the second reason is Abu Malik al-Nakhai. He's agreed to be weak by multiple, most of the uh, scholars of hadith, al-Nasai, Ibn Hajar, Tabarani, and a lot of people. And the, another reason is 
they say that Umm Ayman is not attached to Prophet Muhammad. So that makes it daif again. There's only two hadiths regarding this topic. One that you're quoting from David Wood's Kaudi Ayad, and it also can be found in Musaddiq al-Hakim and At-Tabarani and others. And the other one can be found in al Haki's, Al-Sunan al-Qubra, and At-Tabarani, and in Al-Kabir. Uh, in this narration, you're going to find a woman, Hakima bint Umayma, who is considered as daif because of her ignorance and biography. Therefore, the hadith becomes daif as well. Now, how could this happen? How could someone drink Muhammad's urine? Well, the Messenger of Allah had a wooden cup, which he placed under his bed, in which he would urinate during the night. A woman got up, felt thirsty, and drank it without knowing. As I showed, the narration is daif. Even if it was sahih, it would mean it happened in accident. The woman didn't know that what she's drinking. She got thirsty, and she drank it. You're saying that's gross? Yes, and a lot of things happen accidentally. You're going to find thousands of videos online, like a guy eating hair-removing cream as dippers. That's gross too, but it's an accident. You cannot do anything about it. Now, before you get too grossed out, just remember, his urine, as some of our wise men say, is the water of paradise. I'm sure our entire Uma thirsts for this heavenly drink as much as I do. Eh, I'm pretty sure these people that are called to be wise men are not actually wise men. These people literally said that the saliva of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was made from honey of paradise. I'm serious right now. Every single thing that they mentioned over here is without evidence. They're saying something that doesn't exist in hadiths at all. How can they even say it? And this guy actually said he wants to be the urine of Prophet Muhammad. I don't know how these people can be called as wise men. This is a real challenge for Muslims. Do you long for that heavenly water? Do you thirst for that heavenly drink? Uh, no. Not only was Muhammad miraculous in bed with the sexual strength of 30 men, he was also miraculous in the bathroom. When he wanted to defecate, the earth split open and swallowed up his feces and urine, and it gave off a fragrant smell. So this is how you would know as one of the companions, if Muhammad relieved himself, you see some fresh dirt from where the earth had just swallowed it up, and you also smell something fragrant. Another weak narration. This hadith can be found in Mustadrak al-Hakim. This is weak because in the chain of narrations, there is someone that is unknown, i.e. again majul. The marked area that you're seeing on the screen says, Amman takarahum which means narrated by someone, and who's that someone? Nobody knows. That makes the narration a daif, a weak hadith. That's the video. But did you notice one thing? He never mentions any authenticity of any hadith. Why? Because he knows if you go to the authentication, his lies are going to get caught. He's going to be exposed. He knows that his arguments doesn't make any sense. That's why he's jumping around sources to make sure that it fits his narrative. All of these links will be given in the description. Please check them out. And that's for today. As I said, that I'm not going through the full video. Maybe in the future, I'm going to refute him. But let's stick to the point, yeah? Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.